Hey guys, in this episode I want to briefly address how to set up your display for color accuracy in DaVinci Resolve. So, because DaVinci Resolve is not color managed on a system level, we have to set our output color space in correspondence with our display color profile. There are three options that you can apply to guarantee a consistent and accurate output. Especially if you're an Apple user, it's quite simple to set up your workspace or your workstation for proper Rec. 709 output. But before we touch anything that has to do with the monitors or the displays, we head over into DaVinci Resolve to check our project settings. All right, so click on the right corner, small gear, and then we head over to color management. And for this example, for this purpose, we just choose a color science as DaVinci YRGB. And our timeline color space is Rex 709 Gamma 2.4. Output color space is the same as timeline. You can also set this to Rex 709. Oh, oops. <laughs> Rex 709 Gamma 2.4. It's basically the same. You can just uh, spare yourself some time. Oh, by the way, this footage was shot by Sherwood West. He's a filmmaker uh, based in the Netherlands. And he runs an initiative called Grading Footage where you can simply download source files that are 10 frames long to improve your color grading skills. So let's get back to our color tab. We know that this footage has been shot with a Sony FX30. So our input color space is Sony S Gamma 3 dot Cine and our input gamma is Sony S Log 3. We defined Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 as our output color space, so we don't need to select it in our output color space here in the CST. By activating our node, shortcut is Command D on the Mac, you will see that DaVinci Resolve interprets the footage correctly and outputs a Rec. 709 image. And well, <laughs> it looks great. We're done here. Fine, just export the clip and we're set. No, just kidding. How do you guarantee that what you see is what you get? Also, across the board regarding other devices that you want to export your file to, or people just watch it on YouTube, and so on and so forth. So there's quite an easy solution um, for Apple users. So you see, I have two displays here, and the right one is the integrate display. So this is a MacBook Pro and it got the Matrix LED display. And inside those settings, you will find something that's called Vorinstellung. Oh, it's probably called reference mode. And you see some presets that are pre-defined and pre-calibrated by the factory, which are quite accurate. So you don't need to calibrate your display. You just select the reference mode that you wish to use and you're pretty much set. So in our case, our output color space is Rec. 709. And we just select HD TV video, which is Rec. 709 with a BT18086 gamma curve. So once you did that, you're probably questioning yourself, what the fuck? Why is my display so dark? And the solution to this is, in those reference modes, your display target luminance is set to 100 nits. So that's why it's so dark. You cannot override it because SDR is limited to 100 nits. So that's actually perfectly fine. So once you selected this, you're done. You can now start grading, start outputting your files, and you're basically set. And in essence, your MacBook Pro, your iMac display, both of them are software calibrated displays. You can also plug and play the third party display and calibrate it via color checker. And I will just put it up onto the screen. So this here is a color checker display pro for calibrate. And what you can do with them is they Got this neat little sensor you can just place onto your display or your MacBook display to 
find out if the calibration from the factory is any good. So I just showed you the first option for Apple users, which is quite frankly the most simple one. But let's say you got a MacBook Pro 14 inch and you need more real estate because you're getting older just like me. And yeah, it's fun to color grade and edit your video on a larger screen. We can purchase a third party display and calibrate it with this color checker. So once you calibrate your display using software such as CC Profiler, this software will save a display color profile, which you will find here. Those lower ones, these are made by uh, Palette Master Elements. If you select the right one, hopefully you select the right one, the Rec. 709 one, then rest assured that your output file will look like you're great within DaVinci Resolve. This is our budget-friendly solution, option number two, and this will get you like 99% where you need to be. As long as you're an online creator and you just have SDR deliverables for your clients, then you're fine. But if you need to up your game or need more color accuracy, then you can opt in for hardware calibrated display. For instance, I got a BenQ SW series, which covers more than one color space. If you rely or you're dependent on different color spaces because of your work. For instance, I print my photographs, I design things, so I need a CYMK color space, I need Adobe RGB and obviously Rec. 709. You have to take into consideration what the display will be used for and what does it need to cover. In addition to this pricey option, there's also Declan cards, which come either as standalone or as a PCI Express type. And those cards will transform your video signal through a processor and output RAW Rec. 709. So you can use those in conjunction with a software calibrated display for more accuracy. To sum things up, if you're on a Mac and you use the native display, then head over to your system preferences, go to the reference mode and select the right one. In this case, it's a Rec. 709. Go over to the project settings in DaVinci Resolve to color management and make sure that you defined the right color space as output color space. If you have a third party display, however, then you need to calibrate the display in order to generate proper color profiles. Select the one corresponding to your timeline and then you're set. So if you want me to show you how to calibrate your display, just leave a comment below and I will make sure to record this episode. Also, if you're interested in more episodes regarding color management inside DaVinci Resolve, just let me know.